The rivalry between R and Python has been going on for quite some time now. Why not just use both? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you could harness the powers of R and Python in the same web application. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. All right, and so let's have a look at the app that we're going to build today. And it is the R Streamlit app. And in this particular app, it's going to show you the demo of how you could use R in a Streamlit app. And here, as you can see, we have three examples, which are rendered on the fly in the app using the R engine as the backend. And the R packages that we're using in this particular app will include ggplot2 and also the cowplot. ggplot2 allows you to render graphs and plots, and the cowplot allows you to create multi-panel plots. So let's have a look at the first example. So we're just going to simply print out text in R. And so the code that we're using is here in this particular dropdown, which you could click on to activate or hide. And so this particular code will be saved in a R file. Let me show you. This is the GitHub repo of the R demo app that we're showcasing today. And the hello world.r will contain the simple one-liner as mentioned previously. And it's printing out the hello world text. And then we're going to have other additional R files like the Lipinski.r and also the plot.r files and also the corresponding CSV files that are used by the R files. Let's head on back to the app. So we then use the st.write from Streamlit to print out the text, which is the output from the R command. Let's have a look at example number two, which will allow us to create a plot using ggplot2. And so the corresponding code is shown in here. So this code is saved in R and it's saved in the file plot.r. And so you can see here that we're importing the ggplot2 package. Then we'll use the ggplot function to create the plot. And as input arguments, we have the empty cars data set. And the variables that we're going to use includes the mpg and the wt. And then the points here are specified by geometry point function. And so in order for us to natively render the plot in a Streamlit app, we're going to have to save the output from the R run as an image. Image, and then we're going to load the image using the PIL library in Python. And the resulting image is displayed here natively in the Streamlit app. And here we have the caption. And then in example number three, we're going to create a plot of the Lipinski descriptors, which is useful for computational drug discovery efforts. And we're going to do that using the ggplot2 package and the cowplot package. So you can see here that the code is quite extensive. And as already mentioned, we're using the two packages. And then we're going to load in the data set from the Lipinski.csv. And then we're going to create several plots. Here are the various panels in plot 1, in plot 2, in plot 3, and also in plot 4. And then finally, we're saving it out as Lipinski.png, and then we specified the width to be 8 and 8. And then let me minimize this, and then you're going to see the resulting plot here, rendered by cowplot, and the subplots were created using the ggplot2. And so it is a box plot of the four Lipinski descriptors, and the data and the underlying code was taken from the GitHub repo mentioned in the HCVPRED paper that was authored by my research group back when I was a professor at a university. And now that we have taken a look at the R demo app, here, we're going to take a look at the code line by line. So let me split the screen. And so this is the repo of the R Streamlit app. And you can see here that it was generated from the ST app GitHub template, which allows us to quickly develop Streamlit apps directly on GitHub and then immediately deploy it on the Streamlit cloud, after which we could then log into GitHub and modify the files in the repo. And the app would be spontaneously generated on the fly. And so I'll cover that in a future video. And so back to the repo. So the readme.md file is this particular descriptive text. And so it describes what this particular app is, the link to the demo, and then the R packages used in the app. And so the app relies on installing the prerequisite libraries in Python. So let's have a look at here. 
And so you can see that we need to have Streamlit installed, of course. And then we specify in the packages.txt that we want to install our base, our base dev, and the R packages, including ggplot2 and the cowplot. So you could also specify additional R packages here by using r dash cran dash and then the name of the R package. So you could edit the file and then it'll install the R packages directly from the Ubuntu. Let's head over back. And so as we're using native R to run all of the codes here, the simplicity of this app is that anything that is written in R will be housed within the R files. As you can see, we have the hello world.r, which I've shown you previously. We have the Lipinski.r. Let me show you again. And this was taken from the research paper that I mentioned here in the repo of GitHub here. If you want to have a look, let's have a look. It's right here in this demo, in this repo. So all of the code data of all figures and tables that was mentioned in the research article is provided in this github repo and so you could simply reproduce the entire paper by using the codes mentioned here let's go back we're back to business let's have a look at the code so the app code is in here streamlit app.py and now that we have taken a look at the contents of the repo here let's have a look at the streamlit app.py file so the first three lines here will be importing the necessary libraries used in this. So we have Streamlit as ST on line number one. And the magic of running R in a Streamlit app will involve using the subprocess library, which we'll import on line number two. And then to display the image generated from ggplot2, we're going to use the image function from pill. Line number five, we're using ST header to display the header text of the app, which is our streamlit app. And in the sidebar right here, we're using the st.sidebar.markdown to display the text here, which we specified using markdown. And here we have the H1 heading about, and then we have the descriptive text, and then we have the bullet points for ggplot2 and the cowplot that are shown here. And then I use the tick to highlight the ggplot2 in this style, so that will distinguish it from the normal text. Scroll down. ST.subheader number one will be printing text in R, which will show the header for the first example that are shown here. And then in lines 19 until 22, we're going to display the C code box, which will be toggled to activate the underlying code, which we specify here in the code one variable. And then we include the code inside the variable here. And then in st.code, we specify the code one variable and then the language to be R. And then any highlightings will be specified by the R language. And so here in process one, we're going to use subprocess dot p open and then we specify here that we're using the r script and then the file that we want to run is the hello world.r and then we specify the standard out standard error and also the text to be true and then on line number 24 we're specifying a variable called result one and then we use process one here dot communicate function and then finally on line number 25 we're going to write using st.write the resulting output text from the result one variable which are shown here and so that's example number one example number two will be shown by the code on line number 28 until 42. So in a similar fashion, we're using subheader command to specify the subsection heading for creating a plot using ggplot2. Again, we're specifying the creation of the expander box here, C code, and then when you toggle it, it will show you the underlying code used to produce this plot. Again, we use the st.code command from Streamlit and then the code2 variable and then the language R. And again, we're using the process2 variable here, which was specified by using subprocess.popen. And in here, we specify the R file to be plot.r, which will create this scatter plot. And again, we're using process2.communicate, which we then assign to the result2. And because we don't need to display the output from this run, but rather we want to display the image that was generated 
And so the plot.r file, after running it, will generate the plot.png file, which we will then open using image.open command that is assigned to the image variable. And then we're going to use streamlit st.image command to display the image shown here. And then we use the st.caption to show the caption underneath the plot. And then in the last example, number three, which is specified from the code on lines 44 until 132. So you can see here that the code for generating the ggplot2 here as a multi-panel plot is quite extensive, but the same logic applies where we're using the subheader command from Streamlit to display the heading here. And then we use the expander command to have the talkable code box. And then the code three variable, which spans line 46 until 126 will be the R code, which is displayed in the app for reading purposes. And then finally, we use the st.code to show the code formattings in a Streamlit app. And then in process three, we run it using the popen function. And then the result output is stored in result three. And then the R code here, Lipinski.R, will generate the Lipinski.png image file, which will then open in a Streamlit app using image.open and st.image will render the image in the app and then we display the st.caption underneath here. And then inside the st.caption, we could use markdown for formatting the text and also including the links to the paper and also to the GitHub repo. And so that's a wrap and this is the R Streamlit app that you could use as a template for creating workflows that allows you to run native R right inside side a Streamlit app. And so congratulations, you can now use both R and Python in the same Streamlit app. Thank you for watching until the end of the video. If you reached this far, please drop a star emoji so that I know that you're the real one. And while you're at it, please like, subscribe, and also turn on notifications to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science. And please enjoy the journey.